Okay. This does not belong here, of course. But uh, this is Auburn Mall, the Auburn Supercharger. And uh, we're here to take a look at this compared to the uh, Electrify America station, which we'll go and charge at in a sec. Okay, so we are plugged in. Charging at, uh, well, not quite. I've got the heater on, so i turn that off. It will push back up above 50 kilowatts. There we go. So pretty much maximum rate that you're going to see in a bolt at this state of charge. It's 27% right now. Uh, that will slowly pump up to 55 kilowatts, maybe just a little bit less than 55. Up to the first half of the pack, 50 to 55%. We're happy. But you can see this station is a th 350 kilowatt, the one that I'm on. So as not to take up the higher power stations is 150 kilowatt. This one is 350 kilowatts. And then as you stretch across the rest, all 150 kilowatts until you get to the end, which is uh, a CCS Chadamo combo. This is not optimal, <laughs> not where it needs to be. <laughs> not good, I won't even clean that out. <laughs> Plug that up there. But these look a little bit tired here. A little bit beat up. Um, that's full of snow. I guess that got snowed on. That's not malicious, I don't think. But uh, this is one of the older Tesla sites. It's uh, 150 kilowatt. You have uh, eight stalls, which is pretty standard for Tesla. This one does have a bin, trash can, which is good. Comparing that 150 kilowatts to the um, 350 kilowatts that we'll see over at the Electrify America station. It's kind of pushed back a little bit, if you like, on the um, idea that uh, Tesla has the advantage everywhere that you're always going to have a much better experience at the uh, Tesla supercharger. So we're on the 150 kilowatt. Two 350 kilowatt stations right there. And if we look at the rest, they're all 150 kilowatt, from what I recall. Except for your Chatamo plug here. Okay, so that's about what we know about these sites. So the, um, you know, the upshot is if you're in a Taycan or a uh, one of the models that can charge faster, then um, you have two stations here that are capable of supplying that. I think it's up to 270 kilowatts at the moment for the Taycan. Um, so you have two stations here that will do that. This is not going to be such a busy site, at least right now in this stage of adoption, that uh, it's going to be packed. So that should be plenty for the moment. And it is the fastest uh, charging station here. You know, this is uh, equal to the number of Tesla superchargers with eight stalls. It has uh, two higher power stations than the Auburn supercharger, which are all 150 kilowatts. So, you know, technically that's, uh, that's doing better. Um, that's, these aren't, this isn't common, you know, this isn't the uh, standard for uh, Electrify America site. You know, more often than not, you're gonna see four of these things. That when you pull up to a Tesla station, it's gonna be 150 kilowatts most of the time. But there are instances, you know, such as Auburn, Massachusetts, where there are better stations and better options for uh, non-Tesla EVs if your car can do it, which is the biggest um, question mark at the moment, because not many can really push above that 150 kilowatts. But, uh, you know, if your car is capable, there are stations here that would uh, be technically superior to the supercharger stations or at the very least they're equal so <laughs> i guess you can say the teslas can use the chatamo plugs so they have a little extra redundancy but you'd still have to have the adapter 
and again that is uh, only going to charge at you know sub 50 kilowatt speed so you're not in um, a particularly great situation with those but over there in the distance you can see the EVgo stations and we'll go and take a look at those this is a slightly better location for uh, accessing the mall here it's a bit of a dead mall although it is early anyway so you know malls don't typically open necessarily until 10 it's closer to 9 a.m right now but you know this is uh one of those places where you can find 350 kilowatt charging no problem 150 kilowatts for all the rest which is pretty much what most cars will take aside from your Taycans and uh, some of the forthcoming lucid models that kind of thing but you know this is comparable to a supercharger in fact it's superior to this particular supercharger you've got the whole you know debate over the vehicles that are available but that's a different story if we're comparing the charging networks you know this is an example of a site where you start to see you know a rapid closing of the gap between this uh tesla advantage although yeah we accept that the supercharger network has been built out you know strategically it is uh there specifically to serve this uh cross-country travel in teslas is reliable from what we can see i'll look at some of the plug share listings but you know usually when you look at these you're going to find that uh it's a 10 or a nine on a Tesla supercharger. And it could be, you know, just as high on Electrify America or EV Go station. But sometimes, you know, they have their kinks. And if a site goes down, then it tends to really rocket that uh, plug share score down. Whereas, you know, Tesla superchargers, we really don't hear as much. Whether it's because, you know, plug share, they don't use it so much because there is just a, uh, you know, tendency to turn up, plug in, and it's all within the Tesla ecosystem. I don't know if that plays into it at all. But, uh, you know, either way, we tend to hear more reliable stories about uh, the supercharger network than Electrify America and the uh, associated CCS Chatamo networks. So a comparison, you know, it's not it's worth remembering. And I've got a note for fairness that this is only one site. You know, there are plenty of others and the video will kind of look at, you know, where else these are spread what kind of travel experience you'll get with the Tesla supercharger compared to a, you know, Electrify America, EVgo, charge point combination trip. But, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, we're traveling the same. If my car was capable of doing what a Tesla is, which, you know, obviously in a much cheaper Chevy Bolt EV, you're not going to get. But, you know, once you start to get your mach -E's, your ID4s, and a bunch of these other vehicles which will charge even faster than those cars you're starting to talk about a network that can compare to tesla a vehicle that has comparable charging times and then i see the only thing they really have as the main advantage beyond that is the efficiency and the higher range so you know that is a good thing certainly it's important to a lot of people and the technology is there for them but at the same time a car that charges you know in 15 to 20 minutes right now we'd have uh, a good half to two-thirds of the battery back on something like a mach -E. charging speed kind of offsets any slight lack of range or loss of range compared to a model y say or something like that so it's it's just worth comparing it's interesting to see these you know you have this kind of you know back and forth of well this is only just the situation and tesla may well upgrade their you know site we saw here to 250 kilowatts and then they've got eight stalls that are capable of going that quick compared to only two stalls at 350 kilowatts here so it will flip-flop but the the kind of rebuttal is uh you know not everything is all sweet and uh tesla's way you know there are instances where non-tesla ev will be charging as fast or possibly faster than a tesla ev at uh, some of these sites so again food for thought worth uh you know putting the non-tesla perspective across it's important to remember that electrify america only started in 2018 in the middle of 2018 in fact so it's uh, barely just over two years old now and the rollout there at the start was you know a little slower so this has been a very rapidly growing network um the reliability seems much better over the last couple of months so we're we're doing better with that as well these are catching up in a lot of ways once we get cars like the mach e and uh the id4 on the roads 
they're going to be able to use these 150 kilowatts stations to their full advantage and so it's at least up to par with tesla's v2 superchargers and a lot of the older cars and yeah they are a little bit behind v3 you know in some of these cars and in not having 350 kilowatts everywhere but about 75 to 80 percent of the Electrify America stations will have up to 350 kilowatts and then you've still got 150 kilowatts um, at the rest of them so it's really you know it's closing the gap quite a lot in just the last year or two and uh, these things are going up you know at a rapid rate of knots we've got 525 stations across the US at the time of recording and um, up to 800 by this time next year um, so it's a rapidly growing network. So I just want to bear in mind a little bit of a counterpoint to other videos that have been out there saying, I think at this very site actually that, uh, you know, it was uh, difficult to find 350 kilowatt charging. Well, here it is <laughs> right in front of us.